Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to do a simple example of how to apply conditional probability. Remember the sentence here that the probability that B will occur provided that A has occurred is written like this and so this simply means the probability that B will occur provided A has occurred. That's how we write that. What does that mean? Well, take a look at a particular sample space. The sample space here represents all the numbers you can toss when you have a die. So you can toss a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's the total sample space. Event A simply means that you throw an odd number, 1, 3, or 5. Event B indicates that you throw a number less than 4, 1, 2, or 3. And therefore the intersection of A and B is therefore 1 and 3. Those are the two numbers that are common, the two possible outcomes that are common uh, for A and B at the same time. So that's called the intersection. Now what is the probability that B will occur if A has not occurred. You have no knowledge that A has occurred and therefore you're simply trying to figure out the probability that B has occurred and say well that's equal to the number of outcomes in B which is three of them divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space which is six and so therefore the probability that B will occur if you have no knowledge of that A has occurred or not is one half, a 50-50 chance that event B will occur. But what if we have priori knowledge that A has already occurred and therefore what is therefore the probability that B will occur? Well if A has occurred that means that you toss the die and you got at least a 1, a 3, or a 5. From that, that then becomes really the new sample space and so what is now the probability that B will occur provided that A has already occurred? Well the equation is here that the probability that B will occur provided that A has occurred is equal to the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of A. It kind of makes sense when you think about it because if A has already occurred you know that one of the numbers in A has occurred then if you want, then want to figure out if B has occurred then you can say well what is the probability of build one of these numbers divided by the probability that it's one of those numbers. So that's now a shrunken sample space. So the probability of the intersection will be the two numbers in here, which is also part of B, divided by probability of all the numbers, all the outcomes in A. It's kind of like a new sample space. And so this then becomes equal to the probability that A intersect B will occur. Well, there's two outcomes out of possible six. So that is equal to two divided by six. That's the probability of A intersect B and we divide that by the probability of A and the probability of A is well there's three outcomes out of a total of six so we can divide that by three sixths. Okay well two sixths divided by three sixths is the same as multiplying by the inverse so we get times six over three the sixes cancel out and so we get two divided by three which is now the probability that B will occur provided that A has occurred. It makes sense when you think about it because when you look at here there's three possible outcomes for A which is 1, 3, and 5 and then if you know that that has happened you either threw a 1, a 3, or a 5 so those are three numbers now in the sample in the new reduced sample space then you can say well what's the probability of throwing something less than 4? Well out of the three numbers possible two of them are less than 4 so therefore there's a 2 out of 3 probability that B will occur provided A has occurred and that's how you want to look at it so therefore you could say that the probability that B will occur provided A has occurred is equal to two-thirds and again it's equal to the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of A. And that's how we do that.